So a good example of uh, the Christians having better success together is imagine if I said, okay, uh, Jerry, you have to um, you have to figure out who lives in our community, what what the demographics are, you know, uh, ages and ethnicities and all those different things, and you have to find a way to reach them and how to impact them, and then you have to uh, plan the whole thing. You have to do all the fundraising. Uh, you have to carry it out yourself. You have to do an evaluation when you're done and see how you did. It just doesn't really make sense. But as a, as a as a church, we can together we can together do things that would have been not possible had we tried to do things by ourselves. I mean, typically house churches, for instance, they won't really be involved with doing things for people. They'll be more more concerned with um, it almost becomes like a club or a clique where, you know, maybe I'm really into politics. So my whole thrust will be we'll just be talking politics the whole time. And this can obviously have problems. First off, it has nothing to do with Jesus. Second off, uh, you know, if um, it, it can kind of get like cultic uh, in the following, uh, you know, spreading conspiracy theories and all these different things. Uh, but then the more we work uh, with others, the more we the better we work with others. And. Um, so then things that I would have failed on my own become successful things and, um, uh, you know, they, they, they help reach more people that I grow from it. It's just better together. And, um, so there, there's another big thing for, you know, we really do, we really do as a church need, as Christians, we really do need each other. So, so let's go through the, through this, this excuse one, one bit, but one bit. I'm more spiritual than, than them. Well, that's, that's kind of a tricky one. In assuming that you're better than someone else, that in itself may, means that you're blinded by your pride. Um, and everyone's going to mess up. So maybe you aren't messing up with what that person is at this time. But that doesn't mean that you have no sins or that you won't eventually in the future mess up with whatever they're struggling with. So I don't need it. Well, maybe you don't need it right now, but what happens if you ever do need it? And obviously you will. Oh, I'm strong enough. Nobody is strong enough. And that brings me to the, la the, the, last, the first point on the next slide is, you know, no man is an island. Nobody was meant to do it alone. Um, no matter how strong you think you are, it's never enough by yourself. And then as, as far as being more spiritual than them, maturity as a Christian is found in serving, not knowing. A lot of times Christians feel like, well, look at all the things I know. It's like almost like a walking, a walking encyclopedia. But something, something changes inside of you when you just lock yourself away in your office reading all the time. It just it just changes you. Like you stop caring for people. You you're not able to connect your wisdom with, or your knowledge with anything, and. You know, this is really a sign of stunted growth. So you see a lot of times people say, oh, I love God, I just don't love people. Well, the Bible says that if you say that you love God, but you don't love people, then you're a liar. And so what does that look like? Does it look like always feeling something? No, 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 no. It, it, love is more uh, of an action in the Bible. Uh, doing. So, you know, how do, I pr how do I show that I love God? Well, by obeying him, by, by doing, right? It's not just, oh, I love God, so I'm going to go ahead and, and you know, sleep around and look at porn and, and beat people up and steal from people. But I love God. Well, then evidently you don't. <laughs> it's mirrored in your actions. So how do you love others? <laughs> by your actions. Maturity as a Christian is not found by how much you know, but how much you serve. It's found in that, that aspect of love. How well do you love? How well did you obey God? How well did you love? So let's look at a few things. No man is an island. It's all just a matter of borrowed time until you need somebody's help. Like you, you are literally just living on borrowed time. Eventually, the time will come when you need somebody else. So what makes people believe in excuse number two? Well, pride. And I would say I would ask the question, which I which I asked, excuse me, um, when we did this lesson live. Um, what is the cause of the pride? Is it is it possibly that people get hurt and they kind of I can't believe they did that. I would never do that to them. I'm better than them. I don't act like they do. They're just a bunch of hypocrites. See what I mean? It slowly moves from hurt to anger to pride. All of a sudden, I don't need them. I'm better than them. I, 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 I wouldn't do that. 
and um, it kind of becomes where we become that what we hate. But um, another thing that causes is too much knowledge. When you just sit around and you're locking yourself away from people and just reading books all day, you think you come to this place of thinking, I know everything, I know more than people, and that uh, knowledge is good. But it definitely does have limits, and knowledge in itself is not uh, adequate. Um, it's something that knowledge really only has a place for you as experience guides the knowledge. So as you do, you're gonna you're gonna learn things, and you're gonna one-on-one -on -one experience is gonna show you things that you couldn't have known otherwise. And it's just uh, this this process that your knowing has to be combined with doing. Um, and oftentimes, knowledge can even become a handicap. Uh, and a good example of this is, is when you see people that are supposedly Christian, but they're not really saved to Jesus, they're saved to an idea. Um, a good example of this uh, would be, um, oh, well, I'm you know maybe a Republican conservative, so I'm not really saved to Jesus, I'm saved to a club. Uh, we don't want to change, we don't want any of those uh, Democrats here, you know. And it becomes a thing not about Jesus or about setting people free and worshiping God, the Creator, it becomes all about, you know, my clique. And you've seen a lot of people do this in the past. You know, hey, we're, we're, we are a white church. It's okay for us to gossip and complain, but you better not let those alcoholics and druggies in here. Um, you know, the worst thing in the world is that there's a cigarette in the parking lot, but there's absolutely nothing wrong with the nasty bitterness in your own heart. And it's just like, well, that's not really being a Christian. It, so a lot of times people will, ba will base their idea, they'll, they'll like the religious things. I like reading the Bible, I like learning about the Bible, I like going to church, I like being around the, the, the other people who claim to be Christians, I like that. But I, I, it's not really about loving God and loving people, it's about, you know, this. And you see people really do this, and one aspect of that is they get kind of saved, by, saved to knowledge, not to Jesus. So basically maybe loving finding answers more than actually finding god and I, there's nothing wrong necessarily with apologetics or with you know having answers or with gaining knowledge or all these different things but the problem is life has to be more than just a pursuit of facts it has to be something that that ultimately satisfies us and so the question is you know what are we really saved to here if we are saved to god then we'll realize that okay it's not about me. What? Can, how can I benefit others? And we'd realize that, hey, I am going to need people, and I do need people. And, um, you know, loving God is loving people. And that's one of the things that separated the law uh, from other things is it tied in the fact that worshiping God was shown in how you treated others. And uh, really one-of-a-kind document, um, the Old Testament uh, uh, law. Um, so then the last thing oftentimes people will think that they don't need church because they had bad experiences. Uh, maybe with stubborn people, maybe with people who refuse to grow, maybe it was a pastor. Uh, you know, I have all the answers. I have instantly, I instantly diagnosed everything you did wrong. I, I know exactly all your thoughts. I know that you are wrong and that I am right. I will never change my opinion because my opinion is equal to God's. And um, I just know that you're wrong. And so I don't have to listen to everything that you say. You know, that, that kind of, oh, I don't need to change with the times. No, because that's compromising the truth of Jesus, even though, obviously, nobody really listens to organs anymore. And it's kind of a, hard to concentrate when people keep singing off, off key, and it's really not that great to, oh, you know, I hear this a lot. Oh, well, I don't like the newer songs because of their repetition. You do realize that hymns had like 17 verses that had the exact same melody line over and over and over again, right? Like the, people do know that, right? Um, it's just one of those things where you you have to realize that it's it's not about you. So you had a bad experience, and and that oftentimes is is the start of it all. And like I said uh, before, with atheists, atheism, a lot of times people don't really have a problem with God; they have a problem with Christians. And this kind of goes on with that too. You ha you go somewhere, you have a bad experience. Maybe it's not with a pastor. Maybe it's some maybe it's someone else, a ministry leader, or just someone that's in the church. They have all the answers, really arrogant, and uh, you know they're not growing, they're not adapting, they're not learning, and so just kind of a major turnoff. And uh, for that, I, I would say this: that remember that um, we don't meet together as a church uh, to to revel in our perfection. Um, 
we don't meet together in a, in a, as a church to worship how good we are um, or to make ourselves comfortable. We worship as a as we, we gather together as a church to encourage each other to worship God. Um, so the, there's kind of a shift in focus that needs to happen, um, and especially with this with this reason here that hey, you know, I just I just don't even need them. I, I don't need I don't need these people. Um, that there's kind of just a certain point where I have to say okay. Um, you know, yeah, we. I actually do need them. I might not think of it, think it right now, but even if I don't think that I need them right now, um, I still need to be there for them. Um, just a complete change of focus there. Um, now, uh, on Tuesday, uh, we'll be looking at at this again. Hopefully, my recording software won't give me any more problems, <laughs> and I can just upload the live version. So, okay.